is related to a number of changing desires in modern or postmodern society. And we hear a lot today about the search for authenticity. This won't be new to any tourism scholars in the audience because tourism scholars have been talking about this for decades. But this is now uh, a discourse which is coming into more mainstream uh, social science um, where people are writing about the need for authenticity, not just in consumption, but in life in general. And aspects such as the development of skills and originality become things which are sought after as markers of an authentic life, a creative life, and therefore uh, a new form of status. Um, this has all been picked up by, uh, by Richard Sennett in his latest book on the craftsman, um, not very politically correct, but anyway, that's what he called it. And he argues that people are increasingly developing their skills in order to develop themselves. And this is, this is a general shift within society. So, changing styles of consumption, uh, and also changing styles of tourism. And this is, this is very important because creativity is intangible. How do we make creativity visible? And tourism is an important space and time in which we can exercise creativity. We have increasingly pressured everyday life. We don't have time to do things. So our tourism becomes a time when we can do creativity, become ourselves, express ourselves. And in tourism, we often look from the outside. And that helps us to see the creativity which people involved in everyday life often take for granted. Because we're surrounded by that every day. And often it's the tourists who come in and say, ah, that's interesting. That's unusual. That's creative. And so tourism can actually help us to discover our own creativity. So we can argue that tourism is a, is a space for developing the creativity of everyday life. And the important thing is to make that visible and to allow an exchange to take place between the tourists and uh, the residents and so on. So basically we have factors on the consumption side and the production side stimulating the growth of creativity in society in general and specifically the growth of creative tourism. So in terms of consumption, we've gone from unskilled to skilled to creative modes of consumption. And on the production side, it's moved from services through experiences to transformations. And essentially what we're looking at now is a situation in which we have increasing levels of co-creation. So there is an important extent to which the consumers who desire to acquire skills have to work together with the producers to develop those skills in particular places. And we have the need for time and space in which that co-creation takes place. And increasingly, this is a space which takes place in tourism and leisure, and therefore, uh, importantly for us today, in the context of creative tourism. And we see in this, in this general development a shift from tangible to intangible tourism resources. So in the past, tourism used to be based on uh, built heritage, on beaches, on ski slopes, and so on. Uh, so resources which, which are very tangible. And today, we're increasingly talking about these intangible factors, such as image, identity, lifestyle, atmosphere, which a lot of people talk about, uh, and, and so on. So we see a gradual shift in terms of the type of cultural resources which are taken up for tourism. And so in a general scheme of uh, tourism and culture, we can see a shift from passive to active modes of consumption and a shift from uh, a production focus on high culture to a focus on what you might term everyday culture. People want to do and experience what the locals experience. And so one might argue that we are moving from uh, a situation where cultural tourism was dominated by uh, classic forms of heritage tourism based on museums and monuments towards uh, areas such as arts tourism, 
uh, and creative tourism. And also crafts tourism is becoming uh, an important part of uh, this cultural tourism field, if you like. In general terms, one could argue that we're shifting towards more active uh, forms of tourism which are engaging with everyday culture, and that this is a shift in general terms from culture to creativity. Too far. So if, if we look at this in, in terms of the general picture, then we see that we are shifting from an industrial society based on mass production towards a post-industrial society based on mass customization. You can have your iPod any color you want. Uh, towards a network society, which is based on co-creation. And so the focus on the basic elements of the product also begin to change. So it was the hardware, uh, hotels, aeroplanes, uh, museums and so on, towards the software uh, and increasingly uh, doing things via internet and virtually and all this kind of thing. But in the network society, what is increasingly important is the orgware. How do we link all these different and very diverse aspects of culture and creativity into a product or experience that can be consumed by tourists. So we have a number of challenges in terms of developing creative tourism. And this is relating to a number of things which are important in terms of creativity in destinations. And these relate to things like the search for cool. Um, I've just been reading a book in which you know, the, the development of leisure has been related to the search for cool. This is what it's all about. These days. We all want to be in the cool places. And so you see the development of pop-up restaurants and shops. In fact, there's, there's a pop-up shop of uh, Cousteau uh, just down the road, another Gaudi building, uh, Casa Batio. So you can pop in there to the pop-up shop, uh, which is obviously a cool place to be because no other tourist will have been there because it's only been there for a couple of weeks and it will only be there for a couple of weeks. So you have a unique experience. Um, and tying these places together, uh, it's very important to engage in narrative. How do we link all these bits of the story? Well, you have to have stories about the place and the people. And that's something that cities like Barcelona have done very successfully. They have a story about the culture, about the people, about the city. And this links everything together. We see increasingly a growth in transcultural and intercultural phenomena. Cities are no longer monocultural places. They are multicultural, transcultural uh, places. And we need to use those resources creatively as well. And we have the search for authenticity in the everyday is an increasingly important motive uh, for tourism. So this, of course, is, tends to be related to ideas of local rather than global, and it gives uh, a starring role, if you like, to the local in the production of creative tourism. And the real challenge, I would argue, in, in the contemporary network society is to create visibility for all this. And in Barcelona, they've done a very good job of this. They've done it in various ways. They've created spaces for creativity to develop. They've created themes and labels uh, which, which make these things visible. They've created um, products around things like the Catalan language, design and architecture and gastronomy. And very importantly, they have uh, kept to their roots. They have linked this all to the people of Barcelona. And that's really where you need to start with your creative development, because that is the essential resource that you have, uh, is the local people and their creative abilities. And what you need to do is to link together this dispersed network of producers and creative products with what is uh, very much a dispersed network of consumers. There, there is no massive uh, market segment of creative tourists. They are dispersed throughout the population throughout the world. They don't make themselves very obvious because their creative needs are also intangible. So they have to be found. They're not going to come rushing 
uh, to you. You have to tell them about what kind of preemptive things you have available for them.